Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lorena and I love to share my recipes with you. And if you've been here before, then hello again. Welcome to the third week of the Peruvian month. Today we're going to do one of the most famous dishes in Peruvian cuisine, which is the causa, which in English is cos. This dish exists from the time when even the Spanish were in Peru and it started in Lima, which is the capital. And at that time it didn't have a specific name, but afterwards when we started fighting for our independence, then this was a cheap dish that you could give out to the uh, soldiers. So it was called COS because it was um, helping in the cause for our independence. This dish consists of layers of potato and also uh, chili, which is this one. So in the center, we're going to do the Lima version, which is the chicken with mayonnaise, but you could also use canned tuna for it, or you could use, remember the octopus that we did last week, you could also put that in there that's delicious, or a salmon tartare. There's so many versions of fillings that you can do, and this is the most classic for me, because it's the one that was often made at my house. As always, if you want to see the full recipe, then all you need to do is click on the link in the description box below and that will take you to the blog where you'll find lots more recipes. Also remember that if you like this video, you can always put thumbs up to it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. I'm now going to make this causa, so if you want to see how it's done, then keep on watching this video. To start, we're going to do the chili paste. So this is a yellow chili, you get it in Peru and generally around Latin America pretty easily. But if you live outside Latin America, it's very likely that you can get the paste already made. The only difference between the paste that you buy online or in specialty stores outside Latin America and this one is that the paste will be spicy because they just blend everything in one time and then uh, that's the paste that they sell you. But in our case, we're going to de them, we're going to blanch them and even peel them. And in that way, we have a paste that is nearly not spicy. So if you take a teaspoon of it, you'll literally feel a slight tingle and that's it. So what we want from this chili is the flavor, which is so intense and lovely. So for that, I already have a few that I've done previously, but we're going to chop the ends off, then take off the seeds and the veins, and we're going to blanch them from cold water until it boils. That will take about 10 minutes or until we can easily peel off the skin. You could very well do the paste without peeling the chilies, but then you get a smoother result in the end. So now we're ready to do the paste. Traditionally, you would blend it with a bit of vegetable oil, but I sometimes like to use this paste for sweet preparations like a marmalade. They're so good with cheeses and things like that. So I like to do it with a bit of water, but only add as much as necessary so that your um, blender can work. It's not the purpose to make it more liquid. The rest that I have here that I'm not going to use, I'm going to freeze. I usually freeze it in ice cubes or in a large tray and then cut it up and put it inside bags. And then I can take a few pieces and use it for a recipe. So I've already cooked and pressed the potatoes. You want to have ideally uh, Peruvian yellow potatoes, but they're not always that easy to get outside of Peru. So you sometimes get them frozen, but if you can't get them, then by all means use white potatoes. Don't let this stop you from making this recipe. Use white potatoes, but don't cook them in water like I did for these. Cook them in the oven so that the end result is drier. Okay, so now to this we're going to add vegetable oil or canola oil. I prefer canola just because it has less saturated fats and also some lime juice. And this, this will give it a really nice and tangy taste. And of course, the chili. We'll finish it off with salt and pepper. You could also with these make tiny balls as appetizers with a bit of avocado on top and they look so cute. For 
the filling I have here, my cooked chicken, I already pulled it as well and we're going to make homemade mayonnaise to go with it. But if you want it to last a few days, then I recommend that you use store-bought mayonnaise just because it's pasteurized. So for the mayonnaise, we're going to do exactly what we did for the olive sauce with the octopus. I'm going to have here an egg, I'm going to beat it up with a bit of Dijon mustard, salt, and then I'm going to add little by little vegetable oil or canola oil and mix it in until I like the texture. Now it's time to assemble. So in my house they would do it in a large mold that is translucent so that you can see all the layers and then they will cut off pieces just like it was a cake and then serve you. But I'm going to do it in individual molds. So I'm going to use one of these and make the layers inside of potato, of chicken, avocado and then potato again and then turn it over onto a plate. To decorate, I'm going to put a bit of chili and also some quail eggs that I cooked previously. That was my Kausa recipe, I really hope you liked it. If you did like it, don't forget to put thumbs up to this video, it makes me really, really happy. Please, if you make this recipe or any other recipe from the vlog, don't forget to send me a picture or tag me on them because I really love to see what you cook. Also, if there's anything savory or sweet that you'd like me to teach you how to make, you can leave a comment below. I'm posting recipes every Thursday and Sunday, so if you don't want to miss any of them, then I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, it's free and only one click away. You can also follow me on Instagram, Pinterest and Facebook as Cravings Journal. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you next time.